I am a right-wing liberal. I'm a musician. I'm a good person. And I should not feel afraid to say that. This is not a political video. This is me speaking honestly about my experiences given my profession and my beliefs. To, to emphasize, emphasize, this is my point of view, and a point of view that's probably shared by a lot of people, and this does not necessarily represent the fullness of reality. This video will not be about any of my beliefs or the beliefs of the right wing of any nation. This video is to help other musicians and entertainment professionals feel comfortable in their own skin. This video is to show that it's okay to like people even if they were raised differently than you or believe something different than you. I have friends from various areas of the political spectrum and our politics are not why we're friends. Thank God. I do not think musicians need to talk about their politics, but I think there is a need for a video like this. As critical as I can be, I have always wanted this channel to be a place where people of all beliefs can gather safely together and feel comfortable expressing themselves honestly and in good faith. Let's continue that today in the comments and let's have a talk about what it's like for me to be both right wing and a musician. Again, we're about to dive into my point of view, so I would love for you to share yours in the comments below, respectfully, please. Do you disagree? Do you feel similarly? Let me know. Please share, please be respectful. To some of you, my political leanings will come as no surprise, whether it's my response to Adam Neely's CRT video, the interview I did with anarcho-capitalist Jeffrey Tucker, the various videos I've done about Spotify as a business, seeing portions of my Twitter, or just how much on this channel I talk about personal responsibility and accountability. I haven't taken great lengths to hide my politics from anyone, but I also haven't gone out of my way to shout it from the rooftops either. I'm a believer that music is a unifying force before it is a dividing one. Me shouting my political beliefs from the rooftops does next to nothing to change people's minds and especially not change their hearts. But we live in a day and age where there's increasing pressure from all sides of the political spectrum to become a political activist as if politics was the basis of morality. They blur the lines between policy and what it means to be a decent human being. They blur the lines between state decree and being charitable and kind to your neighbor. I am sick of the exaggeration and the lying, especially lying about what we know to be absolutely verifiably true versus what we are told by second and third hand sources. As someone who is absolutely not a communist, I'm told that I should hate communists and that I should be afraid of them. Meanwhile, in real life, I can get drinks and break bread with them. As someone who doesn't hold default Democratic Party positions, or for that matter, doesn't agree with Hassan Piker, Sam Cedar, David Pakman on a variety of different issues, I'm made to feel afraid to state publicly that I disagree. Being blackballed in the music and entertainment industry for being conservative is a very real thing. I'm not a conservative, but I have some positions that overlap with conservatives. I'm made to feel that if I express them, I will lose opportunities to work in this industry. When I made my response to Adam Neely's CRT video, first and foremost, I was not even close to the best representative of my own position. I wish I would have taken more time, done more thorough research, and clearly and specifically retorted all of those points that he made. But more importantly, I can't tell you the number of YouTubers and musicians who messaged me directly, some of whom I had never spoken to before, who thanked me for saying something. They're afraid of speaking out. They're afraid of taking a stand lest they risk their businesses. And do you know how many opportunities I lost for taking a stand for my liberal values? Zero. <laughs> At least as far as I can tell, I lost nothing. <laughs> Maybe some subscribers or potential subscribers, but it certainly didn't kill my channel. Now, I'm not dead yet, so maybe in the future, those videos may lose me some opportunities, get me tossed in the gulag, but it didn't hurt my career or my revenue to take a stand. And frankly, it doesn't seem like it hurt Adam Neely at all for taking a position on CRT. Again, blackballing is a thing, but it's not something I've experienced firsthand. So why am I, and so many other right-leaning musicians, 
afraid of speaking out loud about our political beliefs. It is no secret the arts have been left-leaning for quite a long time, at very least with outward appearances, and that's the case for both gatekeepers and performers. And we see a ton of people in entertainment get canceled or harassed for having an unpopular political opinion or one that offends a portion of their fan base for that matter. And this small, loud minority of anoms rise up and then the media takes it and blows it out of proportion and amplifies it. Some people definitely have it coming, like Chris Brown of Trapped. The guy is an asshole. I think it's less to do with his politics and more to do with him just being an asshole. But other people have said things just in passing that, again, a small group of people found very offensive and it gets blown out of proportion. To be fair, that same thing happens in the left's camp too, to their own lefties. That happens way too often. And I mean, there's plenty of left-wing performers who take stands and then get a right-wing audience backlash. This is not an isolated to the right circumstance, but we're told by outlets that cater to the right wing that the right wing is being silenced and there's going to be dramatic consequences if you speak out. Simultaneously, we're also highly encouraged to speak out. Um, I can't think of anything so close to an emotionally abusive relationship. Subsequently, those of us who remain silent may start to feel a little trapped, maybe feel a little isolated, get a little paranoid, start losing our freaking marbles. We don't know who in our private or professional lives we can vent to about this stuff, or if we're overly direct about it in our art, we risk alienating at least a portion of our audience. Where is the release valve? Who do we come to with these concerns? For that matter, are they actually going to help resolve our dissonances or are they going to radicalize us? Just confirm what we've been told and push us further into that paranoia bubble. All this to be said, it feels very hard to know how to navigate waters that seem so sensitive and perilous. But okay, let's say you do have people you can trust and you do get a balanced perspective intake from all the media and the friends that you talk to. What's really to be gained from taking a stand? How much difference does your one voice make versus how much are you alienating your existing audience? Are you going to destroy your business and income while not moving the needle whatsoever? <laughs> or on the flip side, say you speak out and you alienate a portion of your audience, they leave, but then you gain a brand new audience an audience that likes you for confirming their political beliefs and not your music. Sure, you may walk away with a nice payday, but is galvanizing people's moral intuitions really artistic merit? Or for that matter, is it merit at all? I don't know about the rest of you out there. I would feel like I cheated myself if our album sold gold because we were confirming people's political beliefs as opposed to providing our audience an authentic emotional catharsis. If you do decide to go into these highly politically charged waters, you also risk audience capture. If you change your mind on a political position or say something that your audience assumed you agreed with them on, but then there's this drastic dissonance that comes in, they'll probably abandon you. And you've already been abandoned by the left, so everyone hates you. <laughs> and you'll be forced to sacrifice your morals by saying things you don't believe anyway. <laughs> Yay, politics, yay. <laughs> Needless to say, it's kind of complicated. So the dilemma becomes, what the heck do you do? You have all of these pressures coming from multiple different directions, making you feel confused, making you feel anxious, and making you feel defeated. There isn't a morally clean answer here. Even the path that appears to be the idealist, courageous path has its own vanity and greed pitfalls. Well, for anyone of any political persuasion, here's how I've been handling it. I have a moral foundation. I have values. These were put into me from how I was raised and cultivated and gained more through my life's journey. I can't go against my morals and values. There are hard lines I have drawn. I have and will falter sometimes, but that shouldn't stop me from persevering 
and trying to do better. Integrity is something I find extremely important. And throughout my life, I have failed multiple times. It's kind of torturous to be constantly aware of the hypocrisy you carry around every day of your life. And it takes loving yourself and being courageous enough to forgive yourself the way that you are called to love and forgive others to be able to form yourself into a better person. The most difficult times, though, are when your morals and values conflict and you need to choose the best compromise possible. When you have to balance between making something your audience loves and also living out your morals and values, that complicated dance, it gets confusing very quickly, <laughs> especially for someone as opinionated and outspoken as I am. The compromise that I have found is allowing my character grounded in my morals to shine through my work, whether that's in a video or it's in a song. I do my best to do the most good for the most people and to try and speak to something deeper than the raging political discourse that is blowing up on the surface of everything. And never forget, efficacy is just important a measure of doing good as the intentions are. My song won't be saved, for example, which just passed a million streams in December. Thank you guys so much for the support and the love. This is not the video I expected to announce that I passed a million streams on Spotify, but okay. <laughs> that song sprang from a duality of anxiety and self-doubt. I was feeling particularly glum about the state of the country. And I had just made a video explaining why I think black metal is trash and was getting absolutely annihilated in the comments by black metal fans, you know, those lovely people. I also was struggling with the new event in my life, which was working from home by myself for myself, especially as an extrovert and especially as someone who has an executive function deficit, aka ADHD, aka I have problems being self-directed. <laughs> Definitely is an emotional and psychological struggle to adjust to that, especially for the first time in my life. When I'm feeling extremely down and discouraged, one of my favorite outlets is making a song or making music. So I made the song from literally nothing to completely done and published in a week, and it was completely self-produced. It was horrendously <laughs> produced, but people still seem to appreciate it and enjoy it for the hilarious Opeth ripoff that it was. I wanted to use the stylings of black metal, and I wanted to force black metal fans to admit that they liked it, but I also poured my political grievances into the lyrics, and I thickly veiled <laughs> those lyrics with some strong metaphor so that it wouldn't turn off the lefties in my audience. When I released the track as a video, I challenged people before it started to let me know what they thought the song was about. And if you got it right, you got a suggestion on the live stream, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Point is, I was blown away by the responses. Now, I coded the song, so if you really knew what you were looking for, you could figure out what it is. But if you don't know the code, or if you don't know me very well, there's a lot of different interpretations to be had. And I got a ton of interpretations, ranging from not yielding to social justice warriors, not giving in to the oppre was oppressive capitalist patriarchy. I don't know, this shit's not my language. <laughs> or some people thought it was about escaping the oppressiveness of music labels. I cool. <laughs> How could so many people get so many interpretations of something that I knew very clearly what it was? My metaphor tapped into something deeper that spoke to a lot more people and a lot more people got help from. I told my story, I vented my political angst, and everyone resonated with it, even the left wing. <laughs> Great! I did a net good for the broader political spectrum than just cheerleading for my side. If that song resonated with a socialist who is feeling oppressed and that helped get them through the day, I am so incredibly happy, honored, and grateful. You don't have to scream your politics at the top of your lungs. Your morals and your values will shine through as long as you, one, do not compromise them. Two, use that creativity you think you have to find a solution that satisfies both your needs 
and the needs of your audience. There is all this talk about compromise, but because you need to remain in line with your values and your morals as much as possible, there has to be a time when you take a stand. Adam Neely injecting CRT into music was my line. I had been studying up on critical theory, its different offshoots and progenitors for quite some time before that. So then when that video popped up, I was kind of shocked. In my view, critical theory is a net negative. I said so in the video. I still stand by that statement. But after that, I let it go. We are jostled by so many today saying that you need to go join the fight. You need to go attack the enemy, blah, 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 blah. When really what we should be doing is building our fortresses strong. And when people come for our fortresses, we make our stand. It's not courageous to build a business on chasing the latest political outrage. It is courageous to build a fortress, to draw a line before it gets crossed. And when someone walks up to that line, stand your ground. You need to know truly where your line is. Takes a lot of practice, takes some trial and error. But when you find it, you cannot surrender. Share your heart and kindness with others. Be vulnerable, but stand your ground respectfully. That is my advice to right-wing musicians. Some of you will call me a pansy. I don't care. I know who I am. I'm sure there will be some left-wingers who are scared by this or think that I'm an idiot. Again, I don't care. I have too many friends and acquaintances who don't know how to navigate this space. There's too many people afraid to speak to one another about what's truly important to them. And there's way too many very loud radical zealots who are unwilling to listen or show compassion. So this is my stand I'm taking. You can be right wing and be a good person. I happen to be both. I also happen to be a musician. And there's a lot of other people like me. Let's have a chat in person. And let's make sure there are still spaces left for all people of all beliefs to gather and enjoy music together. Stay awesome, guys.